Hey guys, in today's video we're going to learn how to make a Grinch cake. So I've got some MDF, um, it's 12 by 12 inches, and I've got some sticky back foil. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to make this board food safe. So we're going to cover this um, in strips and just press it on, it'll stick down completely fine and you want to make sure the whole board is covered. Now I peel it back and then trim and then I've obviously already got it peeled back instead of having to try and find the end again. When you're covering it if you just make sure that you slightly overlap because we don't want any of that MDF showing. It can take a little bit of time uh, so to save time this is what it'll look like when you're finished. Okay, next for the structure, I've got what's called a flange. Now, this saves me from drilling into the board. Um, you can order them off eBay. I will put a link down below. Um, and I've just got some screws. Now, the MDF is eight mil, 18 millimeters thick. So the screws that I've got are 16 millimeter because we don't want the screws to go all the way underneath. You're going to screw those in, and then I've got some threaded rod. Now the threaded rod is 12 mils, and that's the size um, of the hull. And then you're just going to screw this in. Now it does need to be quite tight because we don't want any wobbling to be happening uh, when we're trying to build the structure. Once it's screwed in, it should be quite sturdy, and you won't need to do anything else for it. You won't need to put feet on the bottom of the board or anything like that. And once that's done, we're going to cover that bit up with uh, the sticky back foil as well because the cake will touch this part of the board. Um, and obviously, we want to make sure that it's food safe. So, once we've done that, we're going to start building some supports. So I've got a six inch drum and I've just used the screwdriver just to poke a hole through there. And I've traced a rough outline of the Grinch's face. Now, this board is going to go uh, just slightly above the chin area, and that's going to support the cake that's at the top of the head. If you didn't have this, the likelihood is, is that the cake would collapse. There wouldn't be enough support to hold it there. So I've got some um, nuts and washers. It, both in 12 mil to fit on the rod so we're going to put a nut on first then a washer then the board then a washer then another nut so we're going to screw that down and we basically want to screw it far enough down so that once the cake board's there it's hiding in where the cheeks start to come out you don't want to see the board protruding you don't want to uh, be able to notice that the board is there we've also put the hole not in the center of the board but we've put it towards the back a little bit because your head protrudes further from like out from the front it's not uh you know you don't have as much protrusion from the back of your head as what you do at the front so you're going to screw these on you may need to tighten them up with um i don't even know what the thing's called because i didn't use one i just uh, tightened it with my hands i think it's a wrench um, just to make sure that it's on secure. You could glue them if you wanted as well. I know some people glue the nuts and the bolts once they're in place. Um, I didn't do that uh, for this one. Next I've got some dowels, just some plastic dowels and we're going to cut this up through the middle. And this is what I'm going to use just to wrap around the threaded rod. Again just to make it food safe. You could cover it in the foil if you wanted to but um, I just thought this was an easier way to do it. Uh, you'll need two uh, pieces because it's not wide enough to go around uh, just with one. So you'll do one at one side and then one at the other and that's going to completely cover the threaded rod. We're going to do that in the two sections. The reason that we've done it after we've put the board on is because obviously once the board's on, uh, if we was to do the dowels first then we wouldn't have anything for the, the nuts to sort of like screw on to, so we have to put that in place first. It's a bit fiddly trying to get it to the right size, but I just thought it was easier than uh, covering the whole thing in, in sticky foil. 
So once we've done that, wipe down your structure, make sure that it's got no uh, mess on there at all. And then we're going to start building up the Grinch. So I've got an 8 inch square chocolate cake here. And we're going to cut that in half. This is going to form the base of his shoulders. So I'm just trim, trimming off the top. And then we're going to cut this in half again because some's going to go at the back and some's going to go at the front. So it doesn't have to be too accurate because we're going to carve this anyway. Um, now because the cut, we're going to cut that in half again, sorry, because that's going to be where we're going to put the buttercream. And because we've obviously got the flange there, you will need to remove a little bit of cake from the bottom um, just so that it sits flush. So you can just see how um, I'm just roughly doing it because any gaps we can fill in uh, with buttercream. It's just so that that cake is now sat flush with the board. So you can see I've just trimmed it off there. Popping it into place. And once that's on, we're going to take a thin layer of buttercream. I'm just going to whack that on. Make sure with the buttercream that it's not too thick. Because when you're uh, trying to carve, if it's too thick, the cakes can slide all over. These cakes have been in the freezer for about... I don't know, maybe about half an hour, 45 minutes. So they are quite firm, which just makes, again, it's a little bit easier for the carving. So you're going to take out a little bit from the middle just so that it fits around the, uh, the central dowel that we've made from the threaded rod. And again, just looking at the picture we've drawn to see how far we need to come up before the bottom of the chin is there. So again, just a little bit more buttercream. The cakes that I made were an 8 inch square. I did a, a 6 inch round and a 5 inch round. So the 5 inch round I used for the neck and the top of the head. The 8 inch square was just for the bottom of the board for the shoulder area. And then the 6 inch was for the middle of the face. So we're going to add a little more height on here just for uh, the shoulder area coming into the neck and just pushing that down and holding it in the buttercream is going to hold it into place for you so next I've got my five inch we're going to cut that not in the middle this time you want a little bit more at the front than you do at the back and a little bit of buttercream just to stick that on. Now we're not going to go right to the edge with this one because we're going to carve this shoulder area away. Because I want to get this bit stuck on first, I've chopped the front end off the 5 inch cake so you can see it's quite flat. I just want to get this base bit all stuck together and carve out the neck area before I start building up the chin area on the bottom. So try to it's a messy job this one but try to keep your area as tidy as what you can it just makes it easier when you're cleaning up later on so you're rounding off the shoulders you're coming in at the neck area and you're going to do the same for the other side as well trying to get them as um, as equal as possible so I wanted to get this bit out of the way first and get it ganached before I started on with the face it's going to give you a little bit of support when the ganache is on there, but also carving the cake when it's the coolest it can be, it's a lot easier as well because it doesn't get as flaky and it's easier to cut nice, uh, nice lines. You will find you'll have a lot of leftover cake, so if you want to use it to make cake pops or uh, cake away boxes or anything like that, because there is a, a quite a lot of cake that's wasted when you're doing carved cakes. So at this stage it doesn't have to be too neat, you just want a rough shape and you want to hold everything, try to hold everything in place with the ganache. So I've got milk chocolate ganache here and I've done it at a ratio of 3 to 1, so for every uh, 300 grams of chocolate you want to have 100 mils of cream, double cream. Now I like it to be quite runny at this stage because I just want to secure the loose bits of cake. I'm not looking 
um, to shape anything out there and I, when it's thicker I always find that when you're using it on the cake it drags the cake and it pulls where if it's a little bit runnier it's just easier to put it on and hold it all together. We're going to ganache around that bolt at the top as well just again to separate that from the cake you could foil that over with tape if you wanted to. So now we're going to start to add on the six inch cakes. So again, you're not adding them on in the middle. You're going to add them so that there's a bit more to the front of them than there is at the back. And we're just going to stack these up and put some buttercream around. So it is quite a tall uh, cake. I'll show you a picture um, at the end with it next to my son who was six at the, this was his sixth birthday, just so you can see the sort of size of the cake. So when we're carving, it's thinner at the top um, and rounder at the bottom. Obviously his cheeks protrude. Um, so what I did with that is once I'd got the rough shape of the cake, I mix some of the excess cake in with the ganache and then I use that to sort of fill out the cheek area and again a little bit just around the bottom of the face. Now unfortunately my daughter came in and kicked the camera and it fell on the floor halfway through that so I have got pictures of that um, but it didn't record but I will talk you through how to do that it's literally you're, you're just mixing it together as similar as you would do with a cake uh, pop and then you're just going to push it in fit it into place and the reason that I chose to do it that way was because um, who wants to eat a, a really thick bit of fondant that would you know that some people would use to build up that cheek area cake is a lot is a lot nicer so once you've got your rough shape you're going to ganache that over we're going to cut some parts out for the eyes, um, so just really sm smallish kind of triangles really. And then once you're happy with that rough sort of shape that you've got, we're going to ganache everything again. If you do need to trim off anything, um, sometimes it's better to do once it's been ganache because it doesn't come away in, in such big clumps. You're going to ganache into the eye sockets just to secure those loose bits of cake. And then just make sure you cover all of the back and around the neck as well. It's going to give that support for the neck. You could use dark chocolate if you wanted to. That would give you a little bit more support. So there's the mush that I was talking about. That's just cake and ganache. And we're going to build that up all around the bottom of the face. So you can see how it sort of comes out at the side and a little bit at the front. And then you're going to cover all of that in ganache as well. Excuse my daughter in the background. I think for the cake I probably used about a kilo of chocolate all in all um, just to cover everything. That's a kilo of milk chocolate. So at this stage it doesn't have to be too neat. We're just looking to get everything covered and then once it's dried, we'll go ahead and neaten it up a little bit. So once you've finished ganaching, it should look something like that. And then we're just going to do the hot knife method. So just some hot water and I've got a palette knife and I'm just going to smooth over the whole of the area. Now, the only place that really needs to be smooth is the bit around the nose and the mouth because everywhere else he's covered in fur so you're going to be um, messing up that area anyway so I just concentrated really on the uh, the mouth area because everything else if it's a bit bumpy or lumpy it just adds to the fur effect anyway because otherwise you could spend hours trying to smooth every bit of this out when there's really no need to so 
I've got some green fondant, so I'll put the colours down below, and I'm just going to wrap that around, pushing in the eye sockets that we've made, and then just tucking it all in. So it'll work a bit better if you wet the ganache first. I think I left it to dry for, I don't know, maybe about half an hour before I uh, covered this on. The colours that I've used to do this is Party Green Sugar Flare and the Bitter Lime and Lemon Sugar Flare. I felt that that was the probably the closest colour to the Grinch. Uh, we're going to chop it off around the neck. So the reason that I've chose the neck is because that's the part that's going to be most hidden. Um, you're not really going to see that area. It'd be really difficult to cover all of this in one go. You're going to smooth over the face area first pushing in the eye sockets and I'm just smoothing the mouth bit over with a flexi smoother and then trim the excess off the back and we're just going to press that in and again smooth it with a flexi smoother. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to make this all look like fur anyway but as long as you've got the main uh, joins out and it's all smoothed over it will be fine. You're going to cover the shoulders in the same uh, coloured fondant. Just going to wrap that round. Again, any joins that you want to do, if you do them behind the shoulders, underneath the neck, uh, anywhere that's not really going to be seen. And it just makes it easier to blend those in. If you wet your Dresden tool and go over those lines in a pushing motion, then you're really going to see... Um, it blending quite well. I've used Renshaw's extra for this and they're really good with, for that. So with your Dresden tool we're going to mark in the nose, it's quite small and quite high up and then we're going to do sort of like a frown sad face I guess that one is. So just draw a, a line that tailors down to one side and then we're just going to push up a little bit underneath it and that's going to create the bottom lip that protrudes uh, slightly and then we're just going to put in some dimples at the start and the the end start of the smile and then just cup it round with your Dresden tool and then a line from the nose to the mouth now the line from the nose to the mouth is not a deep line it's quite thin so don't press too hard we're going to create the eyebrow line, so you're just going to um, pull that round in sort of like a, I would say a semicircle motion, and just re-go over the lip, the lip area. I could spend all day um, messing about with things like this, and it's just about trying to get it as neat as you can and as smooth as you can. So now we're going to add on some extra eyebrows, so just a bit of fondant, you're going to roll it into sort of like a rough uh, teardrop shape and it's flatter at one side and thicker at the bottom. Now we're going to add this on and the thinner side is going to create that arch in the eyebrow that he's got and you're just going to try and smooth that area as much as you can and then we're going to use the tool just to go over it anywhere where that line joins. Um, so whenever you're trying to do something like this, if you add it on where there's going to be a crease or a wrinkle, it just makes it easier if you can't blend it in properly. And you're going to tuck that in underneath the eyebrow. Don't be worried about being too heavy handed, you can be quite firm with, with it at this stage. And you're going to do the same for the other side, so we're going to put those uh, two eyebrows added on at each side. Just try to smooth that over with your tools or your fingers, whichever ones you feel more comfortable with. And you can see I'm just drawing in that line. Okay, so now it's starting to look a little bit more Grinch-like. Before I put the fondant on the back. We're just going to do some more detailing in at the front. Another eyebrow on the other side. Try to get them to match as much as possible. You don't want one to be um, a lot higher than the other. 
I'll put a list down uh, in the description box below of all the tools and the products that I've used for this video. So you can see I'm just marking in that area. With the Dresden tool, ignore my other child, um, with the Dresden tool and then we're just going to smooth over with your finger. Well, the reason that we do that is because you don't want to, uh, if you look when you mark it with a Dresden tool you get quite a straight line and we don't want that, we want it to be smooth and curved and that's why I would always smooth it over with my finger after I've done that. So if you've got a picture of the Grinch that you could have up at the same time where you could just sort of look at his eye shape and then we're just going to mark in the fur. So I've gone around the face first, uh, sort of around the mouth where he's quite uh, smooth just so I know the, the line that I'm going for. And then we're just going to make some really thin lines and gradually getting a bit deeper as you get to the side of the, of the face because we want that fondant to stick out a little bit. Don't be afraid to put your finger behind the fondant and push so that it comes up and off. And then we're just going to take some more, uh, sort of like I would say sausage shapes that are pointed at one side and we're just going to add those on that are a little bit longer, just adds a little bit more detail. Um, to the face so you can see I'm just pushing those on you don't need too many of these I suppose if you wanted it to look really realistic you could use corn silk um, somebody suggested wafer paper but I thought that was going to be a little bit too uh, too thick for the face but corn silk could work quite well if you could colour it green And you're just gonna see you don't need any water to stick these on with. You can just use your modeling tool just to push that in. At this point, the fondant is still quite um pliable, so you could just add pieces onto there. And it's just about looking at it straight on and finding out where those bits need to be added on. So I've got some spectrum flow green colour. Um, and we're just going to first of all start off with just the green and we're just going to spray that on now he's got some darker areas around the eyes that we'll work on first so just doing the top of the eyebrow arch shall we say and then all around the eye socket is quite dark the smoother bit around the face is quite light so when you're airbrushing make sure that you're not going over that bit has the fur on his chest he sort of has one dark green line that goes across it so if you put that on first and then you can sort of try to blend it in a little bit you don't need a lot of this color um, it's just about adding to what you've already got you're going to cover the whole thing um, like I say, really making sure that you've got the eyes darkened, the bits on the on the forehead and the eyebrows, the strip across the chest area. And then what I did is I put some of the same green um, in my airbrush and then I added some black in there as well, which obviously then gave me a darker green to work with. And then I focused that solely on the sort of corners of the eyes, the arches on the eyebrows, maybe a little bit on the chest. It's always easier to apply less um, and then you could always add more rather than um, adding too much and then can't take it off. Although Spectrum Flow do do some uh, eraser wipes, if you do make a mistake you can use their wipes and that will actually take it away. So you can see that the shading sort of changing the way that it looks. It's it's looking a little bit more Grinch like. The colours are um are sort of blending in really well. You could see from the side view that the nose protrudes out and the back of the head protrudes out because you don't want a flat head and you're not you're not looking for the for a flat face either. 
So at this point you could go over some areas, try to make sure that the lines of hair at either side are equal. You don't want uh, different shapes either sides. And don't forget to do the back of the head as well. You want the airbrushing to be all the way around the cake. Next we're going to work on the eyes. So if you do the airbrushing first before you add the eyes, because the eyes are obviously white. And we're going to roll some fat teardrop shapes. And you're just going to push that into the socket and then you're pushing in around the edges of the eye. You're not pushing in the centre. If you're pushing the centre you end up with a flat eye and we're not looking for that at all. We're looking for a rounded eye because that's the shape of, of eyes. So if you make your fat teardrop shape and then you're just pushing in around the edges, you're still going to keep that circle shape. And we're going to do exactly the same for the other side. Try to get them the same size and the same shape. You might need to apply quite a bit of pressure just to get it stuck in there. And then we're going to paint the eyes on. So I've done it with the same um, lime lemon, bitter lime lemon from Sugar Flare. We're going to paint the outline first. So you want the sort of, I think it's like a semicircle, just a bit more than a semicircle that we're going to paint on first. Just in the light colour and then you're going to colour that in and then you're going to do the same for the other side. Now the, the colours of the eyes are quite towards the middle of the face. So make sure that when you're doing it you're doing them you're not doing it in the middle of the eye but you're doing it closer towards the nose area find it easier just to hold the picture up when i'm doing it just so that i can i can see and i can try to make it as as um similar as possible once you're happy with the color that you've made and the shape that you've made that's when you would then go on to have a darker colour. So you would add, um, I think I did spruce green. So I uh, painted the outside in the dark and then I brought that in. If you make a mistake, just some clean water and just go around the edge of the, um, of the eye and it will take that away. So I'll show you how to do one eye. And then I'll do another one because I'm quite aware this is a, a long video. So we're going to paint around the edge with the dark colour. You don't want too much water on your brush because you don't want it to run. And then we're going to wet our brush slightly and we're just going to pull from the outside of the dark that you've made into the middle. And that's just going to give you quite a nice natural um, eye colour. So you can see I'm just flicking it into the middle. The eyes are darker at the top than they are at the bottom because obviously you've got the shadow of the eyebrow arch that we've made. And so if you take a bit of extra of the dark colour and just colour in the top. So you can see how I've made it darker at the top than the bottom. We're going to leave this to dry and then we'll paint the blacks on the eye and then once we've left that to dry we're going to go in and add some white anyway. So I've darkened some of the green that I had left over and I've rolled out some pointy sausages I would say really thin and we're just going to stick these on and these are going to be the eyebrows. It is a fiddly job but it's the only way that you can really I would say add sort of like a realistic you know, eyebrow really. If you roll out quite a few and then leave them to dry, dry, maybe do like 10 at a time, then when you stick them on, they hold their shape better so that they, you can push them into place where you want to go. And this is again, just using the Renshaw's Extra that I've covered um, the cake with. Just sticking it with a little bit of water and then using your tool just to push them into place where you want them to be. Always work from the outside of the eye in because you want to overlap um, overlap the individual strands. If you was to do it from the outside, if you was to do it from the inside out, you wouldn't be able to overlap so it wouldn't 
look as natural. You want some of them stuck up, you want some of them curling a little bit, um, you want some of them pointing down. You can use your tool to push it into place, it doesn't take that long to firm up. And you can see I'm just working closer and closer to the middle of the of the brow. He doesn't have one eyebrow, there is a small separation that I've dusted. So the nose is just a small circle um, and you're just going to use your Dresden tool just to push in the nostrils. Tiny little bit of water just to stick that in place. So you can see he's turning a bit more Grinch like now. Some baby pink sugar flare and we're just going to paint that bottom lip. You don't need too much, it's just um, just a tiny little bit. If you look at a picture of the Grinch, you'll see that it's not too pink, you just need a tiny bit of it. Okay, And then, going back to finish off the eyebrow, some longer bits, some shorter bits. You can see it's starting to look a bit better now. You're getting a little bit of detail on there. And then once you've done that, for this eyebrow, you're going to do exactly the same for the other. Keeping in mind that you don't want to see any of the under of the eyebrow. So this is all going to be dark eyebrows. So it's just the green that I've mixed with some sugar flare. It does take a little bit of time to do it, but I just think it's one of those details that's really worth the time and effort to do. So just keep playing around with them until you're happy. So here's what it looks like when both eyes are done. We're going to paint on the blacks of the eyes now it's dry, so I just left these to dry overnight. We're just going to paint the blacks of the eyes on. They're not too big, so if, again, if you're referring to your picture, you'll see how far you need to come down. Normally, I wouldn't have uh, my youngest in the room helping me, but this was her brother's cake, so <laughs> I've got some of the white sugar flare uh, dust, and I'm going to wet that a little bit and just paint that underneath the bottom of the pupil so this is going to lighten up that bottom area you don't need too much um, but you're just going to do that to match on both eyes it's a little bit lighter so if you look at the picture it's a little bit lighter on one eye than it is the other and I think that's just the way that the lights uh, the light shining so I've just replicated that when I did when I did this and you're going to put a blob of white reflection in each of the eyes. Make sure that it's in the same place on both eyes. So feel free to go over the outline if, if need be. I just wanted to make mine a little bit darker. For the whites of the eyes, I'm just using the, the same white, just some tiny little dots in there just to make it look like the light's reflecting. So next we're going to move on to the top of the head where we're going to add his little bit of extra fur. <laughs> just some fat sausages. I'm going to do maybe, I think I did about six pieces of this. And then you're going to ignore my dog. <laughs> I've just noticed that she's licking the cake off the plate. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're going to do about six or seven of these. And then I've put a cocktail stick through the middle. 
it's just going to make it easier for it to push on but also it's going to give a little bit of support um because it's quite thin and wispy and I've you could use modeling chocolate and it would probably hold up a lot better um but I've just used the same fondant as before so you can see I've just pushed them all together we're going to stick them on you can see that they're flopping quite badly So just a cocktail stick through the, the thickest one that's in the middle, dip it in a little bit of water and then stick it in. And then that'll give it a bit of support and we're just going to push that into the head. Using the scissors just to push it in. And then again using the Dresden tool just to blend that in the top. just keep fiddling with them until you're happy with the placement it does firm up quite quickly so it will stop dropping as quick I'm not sure what she was listening to at that point <laughs> airbrushing it just in the same green that we did yesterday it doesn't need to have too much on there and just touching up any other areas if you feel like it's needed So next, I ummed and ahed about the adding of the dusting on the bottom of the eye, but it's in the picture. So I've just got some black dust and a really thin brush, and I'm just not being too heavy with it at all, and I'm just dusting uh, underneath the eye. And just a little bit in between the eyebrow as well. You don't need a lot on your brush because it really does um, spread everywhere. And then I've just got a little bit of lighter green and I'm just doing the middle of the, um, the line from the nose to the mouth as well. So here's some um, finished pictures of the cake. I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope you find it useful um, if you have any questions you could ask me in the comments section below or on Facebook um, don't forget to subscribe and click a thumbs up button if you like the video and if you'd like to watch some more of my tutorials please click the links on the screen now thanks for watching